ever wondered to yourself, what in the world should I get my writer friend or family member? Well, I've got some ideas for you coming up. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Riley K. Jones. I'm a writer, teacher, and author tuber. And today I'm going to go through some ideas for Christmas gifts for your writer, friends, and family members out there. Christmas is just around the corner and I cannot be more excited for the holiday season. Without much further ado, let's get to it. So I've compiled a list of some different things that you can give your writer friend depending on the monetary value and even the level of writers out there because I know there are plenty of different levels out there. There are some who are novices and beginners, some who are pretty advanced, and some who are published out there and you may know of. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are two subscriptions that, well one is two more bigger monetary items. The first one is the program called Scrivener. Scrivener is a word processing program designed by and for writers and Scrivener offers a 30 day trial if you know someone might be interested in it to see if that would work for them. I found it very interesting and I know a lot of writers use it to keep track of their word counts. It divides things up into different scenes for you and things like that. So it is a really cool writing program. I know a lot of people like to use it and if you're worried about, oh, but I need to be transferred to a Word doc, you can, it does have the capacity to transfer everything from your Scrivener doc into a Word document. So the Scrivener program can be purchased for a mere $45. If you think your writing friend or family member is interested, consider that as a gift for them. The next thing that I'll be talking about is more of a, a type of subscription for that writer, friend, or family member who is in the querying trenches, and that is Query Tracker Pro. It is only $25 per year, and it help, gives you access to different things for uh, on Query Tracker to find agents, and you can go in and find more in-depth information about the agents, as well as information searching abilities that Query Tra Tracker Pro references. I know Alexa Dunn references this program a lot, and it's something that I'm highly considering, considering investing in for myself as a querying author. So that may be something that your writer, friend, or family member may be interested in, and it'd be a nice gift to give them this holiday season. The next category of gifts are craft books. These are writing craft books. And I have two different categories depending on the writer level that your writer friend or family member might be at. First group is for beginner or 101 writers. Some of these books I have on my shelf and I have used and have found a lot of great information just starting your foundation as a writer. The first book is for especially those who are younger or are completely new to the writing scene and that is Allie Carter's How Dear Allie, How Do You Write a Book? She goes through all the basics. One thing I really like about this book is she doesn't show her process and method. It's not just her process and method. Writing is different for every single person so, and everyone has different abilities and levels of writing like goals and like for example word count that they can hit in a day and so she has interviewed a ton of other popular successful young adult authors such as Holly Black, Sierra Rees Brennan, Z Brewer, Marissa Meyer, Marie Lu, Julie Murphy, Stephanie Perkins, and Carrie Ryan. So she also has interviewed a bunch of different authors and got their feedback on what works for them and put in a book. This book really helps just answer questions like planning your book, world building, creating your characters, developing your plot, finding your process, etc. So this is a great book if you are a beginner or even just new to the writing scene. And especially for teenagers, I think this is a great book as well. The second book is the well and true tested book of Save the Cat Writes a Novel. So this book is really interesting. It goes kind of deeper into plotting and how you should plot and structure a book. 
I would categorize this as more of the beginner 101, but even some experienced writers could also benefit from this if they have not already. She also offers the beat sheet method, which is basically breaking down the plot line into certain beats that every book follows. The other book that I have found, and I do not have a copy of it yet, but I'm hoping to get one soon, is The Emotional Thesaurus. So there are a bunch of different thesauruses like this where they have words and phrases to pair up with different types of emotions and they have others for different types of descriptions to help vary your writing. This could be bo used both for a beginner writer and a more advanced writer as well. For some more advanced 201 writers, the Anatomy of a Story by John Trubry takes you more in depth into character building. This was written mostly for film um, and screenplays rather than books. However, it does get the same kind of emphasis of storytelling and creating your character to make sure that your characters are dragging your plot. So this would be great for maybe not so much more a beginner writer and definitely a more adult it's a more of an adult level of writing. So if you're looking for a teenager, depending on what their uh, their level of reading is, that would vary. So if they are a very strong reader, they may enjoy this, but it is, it is a harder textbook. But it also offers great writing advice and it really helped me throughout my writing journey to be able to write better stories with better character and it really cracked open the writing process and the story for me. The next book is Wired for Story. I heard author tuber Abby Edmonds recommend Wired for Story and that's actually on my list of books to read and I've heard great things about it where you it takes you to the psychology of characters and storytelling. And that just seemed really interesting as a good read and Abby Emmons really highly recommends it and I'm really excited to read that and I think it might be a good idea for if you're looking for another book if they have those books that are that have already been mentioned that might be a good book for for your friend or family member. My next category is some perfect stocking stuffers. This could be nice pens that write really well and also maybe some nice pencils like Personally, I really, really love these type of, um, they are actually from Japan, the Japanese friends. They write like a gel pen, but they don't smear. So they're really nice writing pens. And I got these off of Amazon for, I think it was like $10 for a pack of 20. And I know that I have a personal preference for pencil. I really like these Dixon, I took around with Godoroga. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but you all know these pens. These, these, it claims to be the world's best pencil, and I believe that's true. The way that it's hold, the way that it holds, the way that it writes, and also the, sh the erasers are always perfect. Perfect erasers. Find out what kind of writing utensil your writer, friend, or family member enjoys and surprise them with their stocking stuffer with some extra ones of those and with some cute bookmarks. So personally, I like the ones that are the magnetized page clips because they're fun and cute and they always have cool fandom ones. So you can always find out which one your friend or family member is a fandom of and you can get like a Harry Potter themed one. I'm sure there's, there are Marvel ones, Minion ones. There's all these different types of ones out there. Or they sometimes have funny things like cute food items, whatever you want. Or for the more serious type of writer, you can always get something like this. They always sell them at bookstores. Sometimes they sell these at places like Hot Topic, but a lot of bookstores will carry these type of bookmarks. So a fun bookmark is always cool to get in your stocking because if, if anybody's like me, you're reading like four books at the same time. So you gotta put your, you gotta need more than one bookmark, right? The next category could be either a, a stocking stuffer or a gift depending on the size, and that is journals. Now, journaling is something that I know a lot of writers do, but not every writer does or needs a journal. So this is kind of on you to know 
who your friend or family member is, what do they like to do, what do they like to write with, do they like writing with on a computer and maybe something like Scrivener might be a better gift, or do they like journaling, do they like writing their stories by hand or some scenes by hand. So finding a journal that works best for them is always an awesome gift as well, depending on who they are. Maybe they like the fandom ones and you can get stuff with like Captain America on it, or you can get some cute ones with cute polka dots on it. There are so many different journals that you can find out there. Some good places to find journals are bookstores, TJ Maxx, and and anything affiliated like Home Goods and Marshalls and Target always have really cute journals and I know TJ Maxx and Home Goods Marshalls have more cheaper ones. I think those are the places where I can always find cheap, cute, durable notebooks and journals. Another gift idea would be books. If your family member or friend is a writer, typically they are reading books. So find out what book is on their to be read list and see if they have a copy of it or not. If not, that might be a good idea for a gift for them. Some other gifts could be if you, if you have a friend or family member who are who is a writer, some other gifts that might be applicable for them would be some type of coffee, tea, or candles. Get to know what their writing routine is like and you can find out a lot about what you might be able to get them for their writing routine. Some people always have to have a cup of tea, so find out what their favorite cup of tea is. Maybe they have to have a cup of coffee or maybe they have to go to this particular coffee shop to write. Maybe you can get a gift card for them to that coffee shop. Or maybe they have to light a candle. I know a lot of writers like to write ca light candles. So find out what their favorite scent is and give them a candle. Or maybe it's a favorite snack that they like to eat. Something that would help them during their writing routine. Another writing gift more on the pricier side would be some noise canceling headphones. I know that I personally love my noise canceling headphones that my parents got me a couple years back as a gift. And I absolutely love them, especially since I love working at coffee shops. I can put those on, be in the writing mode, but kind of block out the rest of the world and focus on the world that I'm creating. So I know not everyone can afford those, but if you can, and if that's something you would like to get your family member or writing friend doesn't already have a pair, then you can, that would be a great gift as well. Now we're gonna go into my final category, which is not really pertaining to writing, but may pique the interest of writers. So if your writer friend or family member loves games, I have a list of games that I know I enjoy as a writer and I have known very other very wordsy type of writer people also enjoying. The first game is called Bananagrams. Uh, it's been out for quite a number of years now. You may have heard of it, but it is basically uh, you're making your own Scrabble board. In the game, you're racing against each other to complete your Scrabble board of words. It's a lot of fun. Try and get some challenging words in there as well. And I know that I and a lot of people I know really enjoy that game. Another pretty well-known game is Apples Apples. It's another wordy game where you are trying to match events, people, and things to adjectives. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes it gets the pretty hilarious. So that is another game that is pretty popular with everyone out there. Another board game is Codenames, where you are a spy and you're trying to get your teammates to pick out the words that are on the word map. Codenames, it is a board game where you're trying to get, have other people guess what is your secret word? Another fun game for writers and even and even not just for writers, but I found a lot of people who are more wordsy enjoy this game is called Poetry for Neanderthals, which is a more recent game where you are trying to get people to answer your your word using one syllable words. And if you get, if you accidentally use a word that's on the card or use two syllable words, you get a bump on the head from this inflatable no sick. Eventually you kind of all sound like Brunting Neanderthals, but it is also a really fun game to play with people, with group, large groups, and a lot of people enjoy it. And that is all for today's video, guys. I hope that has given you some inspiration. What kind of Christmas gift to give to your writer, friend, or family member? 
And if you liked this video, please make sure to indicate that by giving us a nice big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click subscribe for more videos on all things writing and reading. I make new videos every Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a happy holiday and keep writing and stay creative. Bye.